Wisconsin flips from red to blue. I'm Matt Smith today on Upfront. President-elect Joe Biden wins Wisconsin narrowly. President Trump wants a recount. Next on Upfront, we'll hear from Democratic Party Chairman Ben Wickler and Republican Congressman-elect Scott Fitzgerald. What does the election tell us about Wisconsin? Plus, polls miss the mark again. I'll ask Marquette Law School poll director Charles Franklin what needs to change. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin, this is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. I'm Matt Smith in for Adrian Pedersen this weekend. Battleground Wisconsin may never have had a truer phrase than this past week. President-elect Joe Biden pulled out a narrow win over President Trump with just over 20,000 votes, putting the Democrat on top. President Trump's campaign quickly said it would seek a recount in Wisconsin as it filed legal challenges over vote counting in swing states across the country. Today, we're hearing a couple of takes on this election. In a few minutes, I'll talk with Republican Congressman-elect Scott Fitzgerald of Juneau. But we begin with the chairman of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, Ben Wickler. Ben, good to see you. Let's begin with how did Democrats do? Where were your biggest gains from four years ago? Democrats came out of the woodwork and worked so intensely in every corner of the state. That prevented blowout gains by Trump in some of the reddest areas and also uh, shrank Republican margins and added to uh, tremendously to Democratic margins, especially in Milwaukee and Milwaukee suburbs and Madison and Madison suburbs. Uh, we also flipped Sauk County, the, the truest bellwether in the state of Wisconsin, and Door County uh, went blue this cycle. This was work in the Fox Valley. Uh, it was work uh, really in every part of the state where the Trump turnout went up 15 percent, but Democratic turnout went up 18 percent. And that is how you take a narrow Trump win and turn it into a narrow Biden win. The Trump campaign ha has said they will ask for a recount in the state. How is the Biden campaign preparing for that? The, the Trump campaign is uh, ignoring history and its own math if it thinks it can make a difference by recounting votes that have clearly demonstrated that voters chose Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to lead our country. Uh, we are we got to make sure we participate in the process. The process is fully transparent. We'll have folks at the canvas around the state. Um, I'm not even sure if the Trump campaign will go through with it because they don't really have a prayer of changing the outcome. Voters have spoken. I shaved my head after uh, I fulfilled the promise to my team that I would shave my head if Biden won. My head, as you can see, has been shaved. Wisconsin went for Biden. The president and the campaign is going after the process in key Democratic states, including Milwaukee, in terms of counting absentee ballots. What gives you confidence in Wisconsin results and in results across the country? Every polling place had observers from the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and civic organizations. This all happened in the light of day. You could watch the ballots being cast. You could watch the ballots being counted. Obviously, you couldn't see what it, who individual voters voted for. But this is the most transparent and successful election you could possibly imagine. Uh, across the state, the, the re rejection rate for ballots went way down because so much work and so much care was taken both by voters themselves and by the municipal uh, poll workers and, and county clerk, excuse me, municipal clerks around the state. Uh, this was a successful election. Let's go down ballot f for a second. You guys raised an incredible amount of money, sp spent a lot of money. In, in the end, it, it looks like you're going to gain two seats in the Assembly, lose two seats in the Senate. Uh, I'm assuming this is not the result you were looking for in terms of the statewide down ballot races? Our number one priority, uh, which we've been saying in every available moment for the last year, was to stop Republicans from getting super majorities. Their goal was to flip three seats in the Senate and three seats in, this, in the Assembly so they could re-gerrymander the state for another decade. And we launched, uh, in, in partnership with Governor Evers, a program called Save the Veto that raised and spent millions of dollars on critical races to stop Republicans from getting those seats. And it worked. In the state Senate, we held on. Brad Paff won his race by 589 votes. Republicans took their eye off the ball. In the Assembly, we uh, fought and not only protected the targeted Democratic seats, but we flipped two Republican incumbent districts, uh, the only Republican incumbent held districts that have gone to Democrats since the new maps came in. Um, Robin Voss lost those seats and he didn't get his supermajority. So I'm feeling really good about the, the investment and the work in state legislative races in 
districts that were gerrymandered for permanent Republican control. There was a big push to increase turnout among Democrats in the city of Milwaukee. Obviously, as you know, I don't have to tell you that. It appears from, from the early data, turnout was about flat from 2016. What, what happened? You know, the Republican operation has been hell-bent on suppressing the vote, on stopping voters, especially black and brown voters, from turning out. Uh, they've targeted folks who have to move frequently because of economic stress. They've targeted folks who don't have the, the voter IDs that they have insisted that people get. Um, and the pandemic made it extra tough. The work of black and brown organizations and, and leaders in Milwaukee, the work of Democratic Party organizers, and especially the work of voters and volunteers in the city of Milwaukee, uh, stopped the GOP from pushing the vote so far down that this state would have been un was unwinnable for, for Biden and Harris. That work was vital, and it is a central part of how we won this state this year. Uh, I almost don't want to say 2022, but as, as we look ahead, what is the biggest challenge for the party, and what's your, your, your focus post? election? Well, when you think about 2022 and the superintendent of public instruction race in 21, uh, we saw what happened after Obama won in 2008. Republicans mounted a backlash, and we have to keep organizing and working every day in every community across race, across geography, in rural Wisconsin and in the heart of Milwaukee and suburbs everywhere in between. We're going to have new maps for the state assembly, state senate, for Congress. Every statewide officer will be up for re-election, and you bet we're going to fight and win to re-elect Governor Tony Evers and Ron Johnson, who is, I would argue, one of America's worst senators, is up in 2022. That was one of the closest Senate races in 2016. This will be his last term. Ron Johnson's not going back to the U.S. Senate. We're going to send a Democrat to the Senate. That work starts now. Ben Workler, chairman of the, the Wisconsin Democratic Party. Ben, enjoy the sunshine and that new haircut. We appreciate talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, about that proposed recut, former Governor Scott Walker on Twitter said overcoming a 20,000 vote deficit would be a, quote, high hurdle. Wisconsin law says a candidate must be within 1% of the winner's total vote to demand a recount. If the margin is greater than 0.25%, the candidate demanding the recount has to pay for it. In 2016, that recount cost more than $3 million. Coming up here on Upfront, Republican Congressman-elect Scott Fitzgerald. And later, how were those polls so wrong?